Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we're here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If we've left you on hold in the past or if you've got a busy signal in the past, we've got full uh, empty board. Nobody's on the line now. 844-236-6010. Now's the time to give us a shout if you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with. If you have a comment or success story, if you have questions about formulations, ingredients, our Truth Skin Health products, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all your longevity products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, blog posts, videos, as well as all the longevity products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team if you're an entrepreneur or you're, you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to work out of your home, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business and help spread the word at the same time about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You want to know about the longevity business for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business and help me and my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Call 866-735-2470 if you want to speak to a real live person. That's 866-735-2470. You can also order products by calling 866-735-2470 or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also would like you to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com if you're looking for a unique Christmas present for you or a loved one. If you're a skincare aficionado, if you're not satisfied with your skincare products as they are now, you definitely need to check out our Truth Treatment products. They're based in 35 years of my personal experience as a formulating pharmacist, formulating chemist, dermatological pharmacist, formulating products for people with broken, broken skin, wounded skin, traumatized skin, acne skin, eczema skin. What I discovered is that when you heal the skin, you anti-age the skin, and everything we want in an anti-aging product, a moisturizing product, is really the same thing that we want from a healing product. Basically, we want high doses of active material, high doses of transdermal material, and no fillers, no waxes, no emulsifiers, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. And that's how I formulated my Truth Treatment products. We've got free shipping for the month of December, free shipping, and we also have uh, our Truth Balm and Truth, uh, Truth Transdermal C Balm and Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. We have both products available in trial sizes now. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls here in our at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. We're talking halogens, 
Halogens are a class of chemicals, or a class of elements, I should say, on the periodic table. They're all found in the second to last row. They're all very similar, at least to the body. They're very similar. They have a, an electronic configuration that the body can use interchangeably. Although it prefers iodine, that's the halogen of choice. Bromine, chloride, chloride, chloride or chlorine, and uh, fluoride or fluorine are all very similar to iodine, as we've said. We talked about bromine toxicity, how the body will use bromine under conditions of iodine deficiency or under conditions of bromine excess. Yesterday we started talking about probably the most dangerous or at least the most prevalent of all the halogens, the industrial halogens, the non-nutritional halogens, and, and that's fluoride. Fluoride is a classic example of industrial pollution, actually intentional industrial pollution because it's actually stuck in the water. Over two-thirds of cities in this country have fluoride added to their drinking water. It's not really regulated on a federal level, so there are, uh, there are areas that have opted out of fluoride, uh, of fluoridation of their water, but two-thirds of municipalities in the United States use fluoride in the water, and there's no mistaking the fact that it's a drug. There's no mistaking the fact that it's a toxin. Now, you can say, and, and indeed, uh, the, the standard position of the American Dental Association is that, well, yes, it's a toxin, yes, we know it's a drug, but... Uh, as long as you keep your levels down, well, we think it's kind of safe. According to the United States Public Health Service, anywhere between 0.7 and 1.2 milligrams per liter. A liter is about four glasses of water. So anywhere between, we'll just say about one milligram per four glasses of water is supposed to be safe and effective for preventing tooth, uh, tooth decay. In other words, it'll prevent tooth decay, but it won't cause any problems. That's one milligram per four glasses of water. The World Health Organization says 0.5 to one milligrams per four glasses of water. So they're a little bit more cautious about fluoride. The Environmental, uh, Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, sets a limit of one milligram per glass of water uh, to make sure that no one has uh, skeletal fluorosis. Skeletal fluorosis is the main sign of fluoride toxicity. There's not a lot of, it doesn't seem like there's a big window between an effective dose, which is one milligram per four glasses of water, and, uh, and a toxic dose, which is one milligram per one glass of water. Skeletal fluor fluorosis, by the way, which is the, the main sign of fluoride toxicity, is a weakening of the bones, a weakening of the skeletal system. So it's all well and good that the, uh, the government understands that you've got to regulate fluoride toxicity. Any, anybody who understands anything about chemistry or understands anything about biochemistry knows that you want to control the amount of fluoride that you're ingesting, whether or not the stuff is good for your teeth. That's almost a secondary issue. The stuff is toxic. So the question then becomes, it's the dose. What's the dose? And here's the problem with the dose. You can't control the dose. Yeah, you can say, okay, uh, one milligram per four glasses of water, that's a safe and effective dose. But how do you know how much, we're, how does anybody know how much water they're drinking? Nobody, can tr nobody pays attention to how many glasses of water they're drinking a day. And it's not, it's not even just the water. It's all, uh, or I should say, it, uh, what I mean is not just the water we're drinking. It's the water that's in Coca-Cola. It's the water that's in our Slurpees. It's the water that's in our shakes. It's the water that's in our processed food. It's the water that's in, uh, that's used to treat, uh, used to treat crops. It's the water that's in baked goods. It's the water that's everywhere. Water in beer. Water in, uh, there's water everywhere. It's not just the water you're drinking. There's no way to control the stuff. Remember, we're talking about a drug here. We're talking about an industrial contaminant, we're talking about a pollutant, and we're talking about a drug. Fluoride is a, a legal prescription, it's a medicine. And it's a prescription, by the way, there, a, a drug that requires a doctor's prescription, presumably. Why? Because it's toxic. It's poisonous. Fluoride as a prescription drug comes in 2.2 milligram tablets. That's a daily dose, 2.2 milligrams, which is ab about the amount that you're going to get in six to eight glasses of water. So if you're drinking six to eight glasses of water, forget all the other places that you're getting fluoride from or you're getting water from. If you just drink six to eight glasses of water, you're giving yourself a dose, a medical dose of fluoride every day. So everyone, pretty much everyone on, in the United States, at least two-thirds of, uh, two of us, are getting at, at least one drug dose a day. And if you factor in all the other places we, where we get tap water, you get probably getting a lot more than that. According to the website drugs.com, anyone taking fluoride as a medication is at risk for teeth stains, teeth spotting. They tell you that if you're an uh, overdose on fluoride, you gotta call the poison control center. This stuff is nasty. And they put it in the water? All right.
I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Got lines open. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll uh, take calls a little early, uh, a little earlier today. So we've got a bunch of calls, a bunch of folks waiting to talk to us at 844-236-6010. And we do have lines open. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, fluoridation of water, if you're hypothyroid. Keep in mind, fluoride in the water can uh, affect the thyroid. Fluoride is a a, a uh, halogen that the body can use. It, uh, that the body can use, uh, or thyroid hormone can uh, attach itself to, weakening thyroid hormone, causing a functional hypothyroidism. Nobody should be drinking fluoride, in my humble opinion. I know we're stuck doing it, but at least want to minimize your your um, your contact with the stuff. It's a drug. At the end of the day. According to drugs, uh, the website drugs.com, if you take fluoride or if you're drinking fluoride and you're uh, uh, pregnant or you're breastfeeding, tell your doctor, well, we're all drinking fluoride. There's actually nursery water that has fluoride in it. You get a Walgreens or any drugstore. Nursery water that you're supposed to feed your baby. Fluoride, fluoride for babies. Fluoride's especially problematic for the thyroid, as I say, like bromine. Fluoride or fluorine, fluoride and fluorine, fluoride and fluorine, chloride, chlorine, bromide, bromine. They're essentially the same thing. They're just kind of a slight electronic difference between the ide form and the ene form. Fluoride or fluorine, like bromide and bromine, can attach itself to thyroid hormone, deactivating it. The result is hypothyroidism, a functional hypothyroidism, according to an article that was published on WebMD. Quote, a British study finds a correlation between the amount of fluoride in public drinking water and a rise in the incidence of an underactive thyroid. The article goes on to recommend patients, quote, patients should probably be advised to drink less fluoridated water and consume less fluoridated products, including fluoridated toothpaste, unquote. Remember, the whole idea of fluoride in the teeth is that the fluoride is supposed to stick to the teeth and strengthen the enamel. But that's, we're drinking the stuff. It's going into your body. Is that really, does that make a lot of sense to anybody? If you're a dentist out there, if you're a medical professional out there, if you support fluoridation, does that really make sense that you want to drink a toxin, drink a poison, so that some of it will stick to the teeth to make the teeth harder? And we don't even know. There's not even a lot of good studies that show that fluoride does prevent cavities or that does make the teeth harder. There's a couple, but not a lot. And the stuff has been now been used for almost 70 years. Flu- fluoridation of the water supply began in 1945, right after World War II. No coincidence there, because it was in World War II that fluoride was first it, were, were, uh, it was realized that fluoride was a dumbing agent, and it is a dumbing agent, a dumbing down agent. Every once in a while, you'll see these things on Facebook or on on some of the late night comedy shows where they'll interview the American public, and they'll ask them. Who fought in the American Civil War? Or who won the American Civil War? Or, you know, who who was who were the the combatants in World War II? Or who was the vice president? They'll ask people these questions and no they don't the average American doesn't know these things. We got a real serious dumbing down problem, and I'm not gonna blame fluoride for it, but it certainly could be involved involved. Fluoride is a, a, a not only is it a dumbing agent, it's a pacifying agent. It's a domesticating agent. Just another way that we are domesticated. We're domesticated with sugar. We're domesticated with fluoride in the water. We're domesticated with prescription drugs in the water. We're domesticated with antidepressants. We're domesticated to, to keep us passive. And fluoride is a classic domesticating agent. It was used in, in concentration camps, to not for the prisoner's teeth, to, to uh, calm everybody down. So despite the fact that mainstream dentists and healthcare professionals kind of poo-poo the notion of fluoride toxicity, they consider it to be some kind of alternative wacko theory, 
The fact of the matter is, and no doctor can deny this, no dentist can deny this, the American Dental Association cannot deny this, the same fluoride that is in tap water is a prescription drug with well-known toxicity, with recognized side effects, with recognized adverse reactions. That means that fluoridated water is essentially drug water. It's like a medication. and should probably come with a package insert. The package insert is a little piece of paper that all pharmacists get with the, with the, uh, when they buy the, 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 their pill bottles or their bottles with pills in it. It comes with a package insert. By the way, if you're on a prescription drug, you want to read the package insert. These days, of course, you can get it on the Internet, the package insert. If you ever heard of the book, the PDR, the Phys- uh, Physician's Drug Reference, that's a book of package inserts that come with drugs. If you're on a prescription drug, get the package insert, particularly if you're on a prescription drug for a long period of time. You'll be shocked what it says on the package insert. Doctors don't want you to read the package insert. I used to get in trouble for giving patients the package insert, but you know what? Patients should have the package insert. Package insert tells you the adverse reactions, the side effects, the toxicity associated with the drugs. And you know what? Fluoridated water should have a package insert, just like a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker or an antibiotic or a steroid. Does it help with dental health? We don't know. Certainly the jury's out on whether it helps with adult dental health. The subject's at the very least controversial, and a lot of dentists disagree. According to many dentists, fluoride can help strengthen teeth and prevent cavities. That's the standard position. But according to a 2006 American Dental Association report, quote, uh, uh, titled, quote, professionally applied topical fluoride. This was based on fluoride that was applied in the dentist's office. Sometimes they'll put the the gel right on your teeth. The uh, title of the report, professionally applied topical fluoride. Executive summary of evidence-based clinical recommendations, unquote. And this this was published on the uh, dental hygienist website, rdh.org. Quote, People over the age of six with low caries risk, caries is the fancy uh, term for cavities, people over the age of six with low caries slash cavities risk most likely will not benefit from topical fluoride, unquote. And that's that's the stuff they put right on the dentist, right on you in the dentist's office. Obviously, if you're drinking the fluoride, you're going to get less contacting, contact with the teeth. So if it isn't going to benefit you when you put it right on your teeth, how's it going to benefit you if you drink the stuff? Keep in mind, there's no question that this stuff is toxic. The only question is, is whether there's benefit. Now we don't even know there's benefit. This stuff is clearly toxic. No argument right there. The only question is about the dose. And then there's the whole issue of older adults. People over the age of 60 or 65 or 70, they're already frail. Remember, fluoride makes your bones weaker. Skeletal fluorosis, which is the uh, main, main sign of, of uh, uh, fluoride toxicity, is a weakening of the bones. Now, dental, uh, skeletal fluorosis or weakening of the bones occurs on a continuum. It's not like it's an on-off switch. You've got weakening of the bones, and then you don't have weakening of the bones. It's gradual. So how do we know that weakening of the bones that's not full-blown skeletal fluorosis, just a mild weakening of the bones, is, just, is not caused by fluoride? It could very well be caused by fluoride ingestion, especially if you're 60, 65, 70, you've been drinking fluoridated water your whole life. So you're already frail. You're already weak. You already got weakening bones if you're older. You already got thyroid problems if you're older. Do we really need, does an older person really need to be ingesting a toxin into their already frail or already weakened bodies just so they can have stronger teeth? Just so they can have, prevent cavities? I'm telling you, for anyone over the age of 60 or 65, in my opinion, the risks of ingesting fluoride through tap water, or any other sources for that matter, the accelerated aging, yes, fluoride will accelerate the aging process, bone weakening, brain numbing, it's hardly worth the slight benefits, if there even are any, for saving a couple of cavities. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back with your phone calls at 844-236-6010 right after this. Don't go away. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday. 
8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, blog posts, the longevity products, and you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470 for more information. Also, would like to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% gel if you're dealing with age spots or accelerated aging of the skin or acne blemishes or you want to prevent them from occurring, retinol is your go-to active ingredient. Our retinol, Truth Retinol 5% Gel is strong stuff. It'll last you a year uh, if you use it as directed. A jar will last you a year. It's uh, got vitamin C in there, no preservatives or fragrances or fillers and like like all, like our other Truth Treatment products. But uh, my Truth Retinol 5% Gel kicks butt, not for the timid, but it is super duper effective. It will actually reverse and I've talked to numerous people that have told me it reverses fine lines and wrinkles. That's the retinol in there. Retinol is your go-to active anti-aging ingredient. And our retinol 5% gel, Truth Retinol 5% gel, not only has the highest amount of retinol you're going to find anywhere, but it also has a big dose of vitamin C in it as well. You can find all our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Got free shipping for you for the month of December. And we also now have trial sizes on our Truth Serum and Truth Bomb. And we'll soon ha- we'll, we will soon have trial sizes available in our Truth Retinol 5% Gel and Truth uh, Omega-6 Healing Cream. We also have a couple new products coming out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tease you a little bit on that. I don't want to talk too much about it. But we'll have a couple new products coming out hopefully in the next, hopefully in the next four to six weeks. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang tight. We'll get to you in just a moment. I'm only going to read one story today because we got a bunch of calls to get to. Uh, this is from um, the Radiological Society of North America. Leaky, brain, leaky blood brain barrier linked to Alzheimer's disease. The, uh, the uh, brain has a, a kind of a wall that separates the blood from the brain. It's called the blood-brain barrier. And this assures that stuff doesn't leak out from the blood into the brain. It's a kind of fail-safe mechanism, a barrier. However, as we get older, as we eat the, uh, the, the accumulation of toxicity from foods kicks in, nutritional deficiencies kick in, and especially as gluten ingestion kicks in, this brain barrier can start to break down. We can get a leaky blood-brain barrier like we get a leaky gut, and this can be linked to all kinds of neurological issues, especially Alzheimer's disease. According to this article, the blood-brain barrier leakage rate was significantly higher in Alzheimer's disease patient compared with controls, and the leakage was distributed throughout the cerebrum, which is the thinking part of your brain, the largest part of the brain. Alzheimer's disease patient, patients had a significantly higher percentage of leaking brain tissue in the gray matter, that is in the cortex. Once again, we see the relationship between the blood, blood toxicity, and the toxi- uh, systemic toxicity in the body. In in this case, brain toxicity, and of course, the main reason why the blood becomes sludgy and toxic and dirty is because of food. All roads lead back to digestive health. All roads lead back to food. That should be good news because nobody but us controls what we eat and nobody but us controls the health of our digestive system. Nothing your doctor can do, but there's lots that we can do, and that is the good news. That's the bright side. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Gail in New Jersey, who's been hanging on for a long time. What's up, Gail? How you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you, Ben? I am well. Good morning. How can we help you? Uh, my husband wants me to find out about if he takes the creatine with the BTT yeah. instead of uh, fruit juice, is that okay? Would you get In other the words, he uses, crea- he uses BTT instead of fruit juice, is what he's saying? Yeah, like he wants to take the creatine. Yes, and you always want to use a little insulin spiking stuff with your creatine. That's probably what he's thinking. When you spike your insulin, you get better absorption of the creatine. So a lot of bodybuilders and athletes will use fruit juice with their creatine. Is that what that what you're referring to? He doesn't want to really use the fruit juice because it has it's sweet. You know, has sugar in it. The thing is, you do do need. you do need to have a little bit of sugar to get the absorption of the creatine, to maximize the absorption of the creatine. When you do creat- when you do creatine, the key is to get that creatine absorbed into cells, and that's insulin's job. Insulin's main job is to increase the absorption of things into cells. And so you do need to have a little bit of insulin spiking stuff to get to get the creatine. That's where the juice would come in. BTT isn't going to spike your insulin as much. You could try it, but uh, I would I would throw in a little bit of fruit juice personally. Not you don't need a lot. You know, a couple teaspoons. 
is all you need. Right, but uh, right. maybe add that to the to the BTT. It's still a great idea, to, though, to use the BTT with the creatine, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, because you'll get the B complex, you'll get magnesium, you'll get other anabolic or building nutrients in your Beyond Tangy Tangerine that will support the effects of the creatine. But nonetheless, I would personally, if it was me, I would throw in uh, maybe a shot glass worth of grape juice or uh, some kind of fruit juice. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a big believer in fruit juice, but using it medicinally, which is in essence what you're doing here, uh, that can have some, you can get some benefit there as well. Or, or okay, benefit now, there. Uh, with the um, raw milk that we purchase, and he freezes it, will nice. the effect of that um, change if it's frozen? Uh, well, the fr- freezing does have a little bit of a negative effect, but not too bad. It won't, it won't have a negative effect on the protein. It might affect some of the vitamins, but not too bad. Certainly not like cooking. Uh, that's not a bad right. idea. Do you, uh, is it the kind of thing where you can only get the raw milk periodically, so you want to buy a bunch and freeze it? Is that what he's thinking? Yes. We go to uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, to some of the uh, farmers out that way. Very every, nice. Like, eight, and we purchase the eggs and stuff like that's that. That's right? awesome. Yeah. Good for you, Gail. Where in Jersey are you? Down by Atlantic City, Apsega, New Jersey. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea uh, to buy a bunch and then freeze it. And raw milk does have some serious nutritional value, serious nutritional upside. Good for right. you, Gail. It sounds like you know that. what you're doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, have a good um, day. Yeah, have a good day yourself and happy holidays. Thanks so much, Gail, for calling. Appreciate yeah, it. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to, let's go to Dave in Nevada. Good morning, Dave. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Ben. How are you today? I'm doing well. What's going on, buddy? How can we help you? Well, um, I'd like you to speak toward restless leg syndrome and um, taking enough and how much and what. Um, my wife is on the longevity, but um, she's got the idea that she's doing what she can, and I'm like, no. We need no, to restless, legs, bit, so. restless legs are a sign that something's going on. Uh, how old's your wife, first of all? 69. Okay, and is she on any medication? No, we got off all medication due to 90 for life. Good for you. What was she on? Uh, she was on statin and um, and blood thinners. What was it called? Warfarin. And Why was she on warf? Wait a minute. That's that's a red she flag there. She was on warfarin because of her heart. Okay. What happened with her heart? She had an irregular heartbeat, which is no longer. She had atrial uh, AFib. They put, put her on war- <laughs> Excuse me. They put her on warfarin for, warfarin for the AFib. Yes, sir. Is that the only drug? That's the only thing that she had. Or only drug she was on was the warfarin. Was that the only drug you're on? Was the warfarin and the statin? Yeah, that's it. And when did she get off of those? When did she get off of those? Three years ago. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, AFib tells me that there's something going on with the heart, uh, and she has no more AFib issues, no more blood pressure issues, no cardiovascular. No more AFib issues. The rest of the family's got it, but they okay. don't believe it. Okay, well, restless legs is kind of like a version of AFib. It's AFib of the legs, okay. in a way. AFib is when the electrical energy doesn't flow through the heart as it should, as it's supposed to, and it kind of vibrates or fibrillates uh, inappropriately. Restless leg syndrome is kind of the same thing with the circulatory system in the legs. Not as serious as in the heart, obviously, but it still can be disturbing. Uh, hang on, because I'm going to give you some ideas when we come back from our break. Don't go away, Dave. And if you're on hold, hang tight as well. We'll get to, we'll try to get to all our callers today. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the bright side you've seen okay we are back on the bright side pharmacist ben here we're talking to uh, 844 is our number and we do have lines open we're talking to dave in nevada about restless leg syndrome you there dave Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, your wife has RLS. It's not all that uncommon. Some 10 to 15 percent of folks have uh, restless leg syndrome, itchy feelings, uh, f- the sensation of movement, or feeling like you have to move when you're in bed. It's kind of an unpleasant experience. Is she does, is it affecting her sleep at all? Probably is affecting her sleep. That's usually what happens. Uh, it, yeah, it wakes her up at night. Wakes me up at night. Yeah, it's kind of a miserable thing. It's not a problem in and of itself as much as it is the sign of a problem. I'm not saying it's not unpleasant. It is certainly unpleasant. But the problem isn't the restless legs as much as what's causing the restless legs. And usually it involves something with the electrical conductivity. It's an electrical issue, like much much like the heart, her her fibrillation was an electrical issue. This is the same kind of idea, same kind of electrical issue, except it's happening in the legs. Whenever you have an electrical issue, there's a couple things you want to think about, first of all. and this makes perfect sense. This will make perfect sense to you. Is the electrolytes? 
Have her using electrolytes before she goes to bed. Now, is she using the BTT before she goes to bed or just during the day? During the morning. During the morning. Have her do it before she goes to bed. Have her do some BTT, Beyond Tang Tangerine. Not too much, you know, maybe a quarter teaspoon or a half a teaspoon full in water. Drink that down. She could also do some vegetable juice before she goes to bed. This will give her some electrolytes. This will make sure she has electrolytes in her system. One of the things about the electrolytes, as we've talked about a lot on this program, is you urinate them out. So if, she, if your wife is using the BTT in the morning, by the afternoon, she may be electrolyte deficient. Because, you know, if you go to the bathroom once or twice, they're gone. So have her use some Beyond Tangy Tangerine before she goes to bed. That's the first thing I would think of. You might also want to try the Beyond OsteoFX before she goes to bed. Magnesium can have a nice relaxing effect. Magnesium can also help you sleep. And magnesium is also important for electrical conductivity. Uh, also, the B-complex in general can help. The B-complex are your energy vitamins. Uh, all, the whole B-complex, you'll get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You'll also get some in vegetable juice. If she wants, you can take a, something called a B100 pill before she goes to bed. That might also help her. Uh, and then if she's doing any sh uh, eating a lot of sugar, that can uh, uh, put a drain on her electrolytes and on her B-complex. You may want to have her reduce her sugar intake. Diabetes is one of the classic red flag signs of, uh, or, or red flag causes of restless leg syndrome. And uh, if she ha has a previous issue with fibrillation and she has restless leg syndrome, the chances are, and she's 69 years old, and she lives in the United States of America in the year 2017, the chances are pretty good that she's dealing with some dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. So have her taking care of her blood sugar, not eating sugar before she goes to bed. Uh, also using sugar processing nutrients like the Sweeties, the Ultimate Niacin, the Ultimate Selenium. And also uh, if she wants to uh, go outside of longevity, she can use alpha lipoic acid, which is one of the all-time great non-essential supplements, especially if you're dealing with diabetes or, or blood sugar problems. I'm not saying she's a diabetic. I'm not, you know, she may not be diagnosed as a diabetic, but she still might be having some blood sugar problems. So B vitamins, electrolytes, beyond tangy tangerine, vegetable juices, magnesium before she goes to bed, B100. There's lots of things you could do. Last but not least, if she goes, if she has an episode of restless leg syndrome using slow, deep breathing, SDR, slow, deep breathing techniques can help oxygenation, improve circulation, and also, uh, I'm sorry, restless leg syndrome is at least partially due to problems with circulation that follow nutritional deficiencies and maybe oxygen deficiencies as well. It's a ton of information for you there, Dave. I hope that helps you out. Anything else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it does. Now, just have a very Merry Christmas for us. And, you uh, too. We appreciate you endlessly. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Good to talk to you guys. All right, let's move to Kansas and welcome John to the Bright Side. Good morning, John. How you doing? Hey, doing very well, Ben. Thank you. Um, my wife and I are in our 60s. Uh, we've gone through uh, weight reduction significant, and we have some loose skin. We want to build up our muscles, do some Good strength training, but we're also eating ketogenic. Good for you. My understanding of ketogenics is weight loss, so how can we... It's muscle building. Muscle. It's fat loss and muscle building. Fat loss, muscle building. That's kind of an interesting point, though, you raised. I was talking to a gal a couple days ago, and she's, uh, I was telling her about ketogenic diet and calorie restriction. She says to me, but I'm 94 pounds. I don't want to lose any more weight. See, we sometimes, we sometimes think of weight as being the same as muscle. So we want to lose weight, and we just... We just, or we want to gain weight. We think, well, I just gonna. How am I gonna gain weight if I if I stop eating the calories or if I go ketogenic? You're gonna gain muscle. You don't want to lose weight. You don't want to gain weight. You want to gain muscle. Gaining weight's easy. Just eat a bunch of ice cream and and candy bars and pasta, and you'll gain weight. Nobody wants to gain weight. We want to gain muscle mass. And what you're talking about is gaining muscle, and ketogenic, uh, the ketogenic diet is the ideal diet for building muscle. When the body thinks it's starving. You don't want to go through real starvation, but acute, quick bursts of starvation, which is what fasting does and what the ketogenic diet does, it kind of tricks the body into, into activating muscle growth. When the body thinks it's starving, as long as you have your nutrients, but you just trick the body into thinks it's starving, you're going to build muscle. This is one of the ways the body it kind of helps us go find food. So basically, you're tricking the body into thinking it's in starvation mode, so it has to build muscle. That's what the ketogenic diet does. That's what calorie restriction does, and that's what intermittent fasting does. All three of these are great strategies for building muscle. All, th all three of these are great strategies for anti-aging. All three of these are great strategies for stabilizing chemistry, uh, blood chemistry if you're dealing with messed up blood sugar. Uh, pretty much any health challenge will benefit from intermittent fasting, calorie restriction, and the ketogenic diet. So lift weights, a that's a great strategy. Resistance training. Actually, you don't have to lift weights necessarily. That's just an easy way to do it. But uh, use resistance training uh, exercises, whatever they may be, and go keep 
ketogenic. Make sure you're getting enough protein, but not too much protein, and make sure you're getting all your all your micronutrients as well. I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. Does um um oh the uh, connective tissue? Yes. Uh, Supplements All the, help that. Absolutely, that will help. Now, won't, you won't build muscle from it, but connective tissue makes the muscle work better so that you can get better workouts so you can build muscle. So the, we need to uh, tighten the skin, so isn't that That's a connective of, tissue. Absolutely, that will help you with con, uh, connect. Absolutely, connective tissue building supplements like glucosamine, the glucogel caps, straight gelatin, vitamin C, essential fatty acids, bone broth protein, all protein, right. excuse me, whey protein, egg protein, all of that will help you build connective tissue. Eating, eating connective tissue, though, in the form of collagen and gelatin is a, is a great way to help build connective tissue, especially in conjunction with resistance training, the two together. And don't forget your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which acts like a key to turn on the ignition of the connective tissue building machinery. It's not the raw material, but it actually initiates the synthesis or the production of the connective tissue. All right. All right. Anything else, John? That's good. Um, well, on the uh, on the skin issue, won't uh, eventually that uh, when the skin tightens up, will that clear up the uh, the skin tags and the age spots? Oh, absolutely. Skin tags and age spots. Skin tags and age spots need to be regarded as a breakdown in, or some kind of disruption in the biochemistry. Age spots usually involve problems metabolizing or processing the hormone estrogen, also stress hormone. So you can use nutrients to help balance estrogen. Progesterone will help you with the age spots. Um, uh, also, a melatonin. We haven't talked a lot about melatonin lately, but that's a great supplement for folks dealing with problems with age spots. It's an anti-cortisol, uh, anti-stress supplement, and as we age, our melatonin Melatonin levels drop, so you can use that. Uh, also, pregnenolone can help you. Uh, keeping your blood sugar stable can help you with the age spots. Skin tags also are a problem with blood sugar. Uh, usually, you want to relate skin tags to dysglycemia. And keep in mind, you don't have to be diagnosed as a diabetic. Most of us are going to have some degree of messed up blood sugar, i.e. dysglycemia, as we get older. So work on, work on your blood sugar. All the things we just talked about, the ketogenic diet, the weightlifting, uh, the protein, and the, the uh, uh, bone broth protein, and the glucose. Cosamine, all of those are going to help you keep your blood sugar stable. I want to get one more call in. John, thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Let's uh, go to Truth Raider. You get the last word, Carl. What's going on, my friend? Good morning, brother. Two, two subjects here. Not enough time to talk about them, but I'll tell you what the topic lines are. Yes. Uh, the fluoride dentist and flexoril in its composition. That's flexoril is, a, is an antihistamine-like substance that's a muscle relaxant. Very effective, yep. actually, but it may cause, you, cause a little drowsy. It's one of those old-time medicines. Uh, and then the second thing you said, the fluoride dentist? The I fluoride think. dentist, my dentist, yeah. is absolutely sold on using fluoride treatment, would like me to, and is for putting fluoride in the water, water fluoride. Well, you know what? He should be reading up on fluoride. Well, listen in tomorrow. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk more about fluoride. I'm going to talk about a couple books that your dentist should read. So listen in tomorrow, or have your dentist listen in tomorrow if he'll ever do that. Well, I, doubt he would I do have that. an appointment with him tomorrow. I have a dentist appointment tomorrow. And so my little dentist, my, my, my cute little girl that, that was there, my dentist, the young dentist, she's gone. She's so you got a new dentist? Yeah, do you have to go to this guy? Uh, I, I, I can probably put petition to, to rotate the, you know, the dentist around and get somebody else. <laughs> but uh, some things he know, won't do and some things he wants doc, to do. Doctors and, and dentists yeah. drink the Kool-Aid, too. You know, yeah. that's just how it is. So he's probably a nice guy. I'm sure he means well. But they're right. they're subject to the entrancement of the pharmacomedical model as much as anybody is. Well, all right, i got to motivate Carl. Of... That's the end of the show. Thanks so much for your yeah. call. Appreciate it. And uh, that's it. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our longevity products at criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and pharmacistben.com, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program by joining the Brightside Ben team. You can call 866-735-2470 for more information. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.